But just like they misjudged with me, they never considered the strength of the human spirit. They never considered what would happen when people cared about each other, when love entered the equation. And that has caused people to stand and a lot more people are awake and aware and it's making a profound difference. It's certainly the cause, ultimately, of my recovery. But they weren't aware of any of those aspects back then. All they knew was exact, exact scientific formula for exactly how to control someone and what happens to the brain when a person is severely traumatized. They knew that if a person didn't have any continuity of thought or any awareness of time, that they would have extreme physical endurance. Because when um, a, a person is, does something real exhausting and real extensive for a while, completely forgets about it, the brain doesn't signal the body to be tired, and it's as fresh as it was before it, it, it had gone through um, all the strenuous activity leading up to it. This became a very strong interest for the government in um, creating what we now know as special forces or the military special forces that have seemingly superhuman strength and superhuman endurance, superhuman vision, and an ability to carry on and carry out orders that are extraordinary. This was also an opportunity for the government to store secrets within a mind of someone like that while at the same time having a photographic memory to know exactly how to carry out the, the various orders. When they began meddling in the, the subconscious mind, our subconscious mind is the part that controls our, our breathing, it controls our blood flow, it controls uh, numerous body functions. And because of that, it, a person could actually take a bullet and not bleed, not recognize or acknowledge the pain, have it compartmentalized and go on as though nothing had happened. And by not acknowledging it, the, the, um, the pain doesn't slow them down, the endurance continues, the bleeding is stopped, and they're able to continue to do whatever it is they're, they're programmed to to carry out. This is pertinent information about what our brains are capable of doing. Just because the criminals that are in control of our country right now and in control of our information who have suppressed these pertinent facts from the uh, American Psychiatric and Psychological Associations and from the mental health community as a whole but most of all, they've suppressed this information from you and I because we have a right to this information. We have a right to know that our brain is capable of these kind of functions because if someone can reach in and control the subconscious mind using the language of the subconscious and trauma, what can we do with the realization that we have that capacity within our own brains? and have it spirit driven and driven by our own choices, driven by love, driven by compassion. It makes a, a powerful difference in our own ability to heal ourselves when we can regulate our own blood flow, when we can regulate our own breathing. And if we can affect those kinds of aspects of our body, we can also regulate um, other aspects of healing that are essential to um, our, our, our own living, especially these days, because more and more we're seeing where our medical system is significantly eroded by, for financial reasons, by insurance, by um, doctors who are controlled by drug, the drug companies. And also because we're so financially devastated, it's very difficult to be able to just af simply afford uh, medical treatment. So to know that we have these capacities in our brain is essential today now more than ever. And it's really a very positive aspect of learning about mind control, about learning to, the, how our brains can actually function. But Back in the early 60s, 
when I was growing up and the government was looking into these mind control abilities. And my father was flown to Boston because the Catholics had also long since learned the effects of trauma on the human mind through the Spanish Inquisition, through the Crusades. They knew how the mind responds to significant trauma. Combining the Hitler-Himmler research with what the Catholics had learned and taking it into a new level with through the, the CIA and through the technological advancements that were beginning to come forth in society. We had, we had television then, which was having a strong impact on people and gave them the ability to uh, implement mass mind control far stronger than Adolf Hitler ever could do. And also through the music, because music was, was coming on so strong then and it was learned how harmonics affect the brain function as well. It's like when you hear a, um, a specific song and you can remember something that had happened the first time you ever heard that song. I've heard people say that quite often. Well, I remember what happened. Um, remember when we were in the car and the song came on and remember how we fell in love to that song. I mean, people remember certain events with, with music because the harmonic vibration that affects the um, neuron pathways of the brain and allows for the song lyrics to go in deeper. So harmonics were coming on real strong as well. My father's role, since he was only, um, he only had a sixth grade education and he earned his living as a worm digger up to that point um, and was supplementing the family income with child pornography. He wasn't extremely bright, and yet he had enough intelligence to be able to understand what they were telling him about the way the subconscious mind responds and reacts. Plus, all he had to do was carry out specific orders to make sure that I was in certain places at certain times according to the government specifications. The local politician that had approached my father on, on selling me into MK Ultra Mind Control was Gerald Ford. This is the same Gerald Ford who went on to become the unelected president of the United States. Gerald Ford's political career escalated significantly and since I was in MK Ultra Mind Control um, with, with under, predominantly under Ford back in those days, then my victimization rose proportionately until I was used on a White House Pentagon level during the Reagan-Bush administration. But nevertheless, Gerald Ford was uh, very much instrumental in bringing mind control not only on an individual basis, but also on a mass mind control level as well, particularly by the time um, he was in office of, of president. Consider that Gerald Ford's presidential cabinet included George Bush as head of the CIA, Donald Rumsfeld as Secretary of Defense, Dick Cheney, as Secretary of State, Jack Valenny as his press secretary. Of course, many of you know Jack Valenny as head of the Motion Picture Association of America. And he, along with a small handful of corporations, control our medias and decide what information we can be privy to through the television, through the arts.